A very good morning to everybody, and uh, we'd like to welcome you all to the Sunday morning service. Let's begin the service with a word of prayer. A loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning, Lord, and we pray and we ask, Master, that you will bless the service, Lord Jesus, and everybody who's watching it, Master, Lord, we pray that the word that is being shared, Lord, will touch the people's heart, Lord Jesus. We pray for the worship team, Lord, we pray for the media team, Lord, and we pray for, for, for the live service that we're, we're casting, Lord Jesus, and we pray for every single member out there, Lord Jesus. We ask that you will bless the people who are watching it, Lord Jesus. We ask this in your most precious and prayer answering name. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, 
thank you, God. We oh, praise we bless you, your name, Lord. We worship you, God. We exalt your name, God. We give you glory. We honor you, praise of God. We give you glory. 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 No shakabaya mama mama. Praise you. We thank you. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Glory, glory be praised. We thank you, God, for what you're about to do, Lord. Praise you. We bless your name. Praise you, God. We bless your name. Oh, we glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Shahadah. Praise your name, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord. God. We worship your name, Lord. Praise Bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Blessed be your name, God. Uh, Church, why don't we take a few moments to pray right now for our nation of India and the current uh, COVID-19 situation that's happening right now. So let's all just bow our heads down and uh, pray for some time. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, oh God, that you've yes. allowed us, oh God, to gather in your presence, oh Father God. Thank Praise you for bringing each and every one of us here, oh Father God. Father God, right now, I'd like to pray, oh Father God, for this uh, COVID-19 crisis that is happening right now, oh Father Lord God. I pray, oh Lord, especially for our nation of India, oh Father God, which is starting to suffer, oh Lord, under the hands of this evil virus, oh Father God, that is destroying the lives of so many people, oh Father God. Father, Lord God, I pray, O oh God, that you have you take complete control of this situation, Father God. I pray, O oh God, that your hand will start moving, O oh Lord, through all the states of this nation, O oh Father God. Oh Father, Lord God, I pray, O oh God, for your mighty power to just rush in, O oh God. Yes. I pray, O oh God, for healing and deliverance, O oh Father God. Yes. I pray, O oh Father God, for all the patients, O oh God, which are being tested positive, O oh Father God. We see day after day so many cases coming, O oh Father God, and thousands, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will have complete control, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, for your healing power, your deliverance to flow through them, O oh Father Thank God. You, Thank Any you, form of the virus that has entered into their body will be destroyed in your mighty name, O oh yes, Father God. Lord. I pray, O oh God, for everything that is infectious, O oh God, that is Father, entering into yeah. your children's bodies to be destroyed right now, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray, O oh God, for the critical Thank patients, O oh God. Yes. Patients with other medical conditions, O oh Father God. Yes, my patients Lord. in the ICU right now, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, Thank for... You. Your power to just flow through them, O oh Father God. Yes. When doctors are given up, O oh Father God, we look to you, O oh Father Jesus. God. We pray, O oh God, that you do mighty signs and wonders, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for miracles to start happening, O oh Father God. Yeah. We pray for hospitals to uh, see Thank miracles, O oh Father God. Signs and wonders Thank will happen, O oh Father Jesus. God. And people will be awestruck by your wonder and your yes. power, O oh Father God. Yes, my Father. I pray, O oh Father God, that you will do a mighty work, O oh Father God. God. In and through all these patients that keep coming, O oh Father God. Father God, I pray that you come. come Keep it under control, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, that this, the number of positive cases will stop rising, O oh Father God. And I pray especially, O oh Lord, for the patients that have lost their lives, O oh Father God. I pray for their families, O oh Father God, that might be hurt and are uh, discomforted, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, that you will be their comforter. Yes. And you will, you will allow them to get through this victoriously, O oh Father God. Father God, this virus will not take control of lives of people, O oh Father God. It will not be able to, to harm your children, O oh Father God. I would like to also pray, O oh Father God, for the doctors, the nurses, O oh Father God, the hospitals, O yes. oh Father God, everyone that comes in contact with these patients, O oh Father God, the frontline workers, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, for blessings to be showered yes. upon them, for their yes. devotion and their energy and the time that they're giving to save the lives Hallelujah of your Lord. children, O oh Father Hallelujah God. Lord. I pray that you will bless them in a mighty way, you will strengthen Hallelujah them, O oh Father God. I pray for protection over their lives, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, that the virus will not enter into their bodies and will not harm them in any way, O oh Father God. Amen. I pray that you will do a mighty work, O oh Father God, Amen. in and through their lives. You will use them as your vessels, as your instruments, O oh Father God, Thank to you, Lord. heal your children, O oh Father God, and to deliver them from their conditions, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh Lord, also for the general population, O oh Father God, the people who are in lockdown, O oh Father yes. God, I pray that you will be with them. Yes. I pray for the people who have started their walking, O oh Father God. I pray that you will watch over them as they travel, O yes. oh Father God, I yes, bind and I rebuke. Any heart that comes that way, O oh Father God, I pray for protection over their lives as well, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh Lord, for the people who are most likely to be infected, O oh God, the, the elderly people and the small children, O oh yes, Father God. I yes, pray for Lord. immunity to start growing within them, O oh Father God. Amen. I yes. pray, O oh God, that your mighty power will flow through them, O oh Father God. Yes. You strengthen every single cell in their body, O oh Father yes. God. They will not be able to contract this virus, O oh Father yes, God. And they, will yes. be, they will be kept uh, apart, O oh Lord, from this virus, O oh God. Yes, and the virus Lord. will not be able to enter through their body, O oh Father God. Continue to be with everyone, O Lord, and I pray, O Lord, that people will start taking this situation seriously, O Lord. They will 
yes, my Lord. Lord. Yes, my Lord. They will uh, follow the rules and the protocols of Father God. I pray that you will allow them to use their wisdom and knowledge to be able to mm. understand all of the things that have been put of Father yes, God. Yes. And I pray, God, that you will bless them in a mighty way, Father God. Amen. Father God, I would like to also pray, Lord, for our government of Father God, yes, all Lord. the ministers yes. of God. The chief minister Everyone and the prime minister, yes. Father God, as they, yes. as they gather and they make Father rules of Father God and they, they plan for the, the, the future of Father God, I pray that you will be in their midst of Father God. You will allow them, O Lord, to decide a proper plan of Father God, a proper strategy, O Lord, for us to get through this crisis of Father God, whether it be to extend lockdowns or to lift the lockdowns of God. Yes, yes. I pray, O God, that you will move through that entire conversation of yes, whatever Lord. Yes, discussions Lord. they keep having of Father God. I pray that you will be the center of it of all of Father God. I pray that you will speak to them, O Father God, and you will allow them, O Lord, to seek the safest route, the yes, safest plan, O yes, Father God, yes. which will be able to help us, O Lord, to get through this situation in, in a proper manner, O Father God. I pray, O Lord, for the economy of our country, O Father God, and if the problems of people losing their jobs, O Father God, I pray, O God, that you will start to work, O Father God. I pray, O God, for employers to uh, keep in mind, O Father God, the difficult situations that are there, O Father God, and I pray that you will speak to them, O Father God, and not uh, let go of people, O Father God. I pray, O God, that you will use every one of Father God, wherever they are, O Father God. And I pray, O oh God, that you will bless the economy of this nation of India, Father God. Amen. You will allow it to be stable, O oh yes, Father God. I pray that there will be no harm, no damage, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, also for the, the migrant workers, O oh Father God. We see oh so Lord, many uh, people gathering, O oh Father God, so many difficult yes. situations, O oh Father God, where people yes. are not allowed yes. to go back to their homes, O yes. oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, that you will open the hearts and the minds of people, O oh Father God, and they will allow them, O oh God, to travel, O oh Father God, and they will allow them to go back home, O oh Father God. I pray that you will do a mighty work, O oh Father God, even through the lives of all these workers, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh God, for your hand of protection upon their lives, O oh God, and I pray that you will provide for them, O oh God, the desires of the heart. Amen. Thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for them, O oh Father yes, God. Yes, Lord. To do, yes, Father God. Lord. Continue to be, O oh Lord, with each and every Amen. single yes. uh, child, O oh Lord, in this nation of India, O Father Thank God. You, Lord. As we get through this, O oh Father God, we look to you and we, we pray that you hear our prayer and you hear our cry, O oh Father God. And you will answer yes. to Father God and you will help us, O oh Lord, to get through all of this, O oh Father God. Yes, I, pr Lord. I bind and I rebuke this virus, O oh God. Wherever it may be going, O oh Father God, however it is spreading, O oh Father God, I pray that you will have complete Thank control you, and Thank you will you. completely remove it from our nation of India, O oh Father God. Mm -hmm. I pray that your, your power will just flow through us, O oh Father God. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to deliver us, O oh Father God, and help us in everything that we do and Hallelujah. say, O oh Father God. Hallelujah. Father God, I would also like to have a small prayer, Lord, for the rest of the the, the other countries, O oh Father God. I pray, O yes, Father, that Lord, yes. as we see the condition uh, might be getting better or the condition is slightly yes. getting better, Father God, that yes, we see your hand walking in and through these other countries as well, Father God. I pray that you continue to walk in and through them, mm -hmm. Father God. I pray, O Lord, that the number of cases which are uh, piling up will start reducing, Father God. And I pray, O Lord, for all the countries to be blessed by your power, yeah. Father God. I pray, O God, that you would walk in and through every single nation of Father God throughout this entire global God. Yes. And together we will glorify and praise you at the end of the day, yes, Father God, for the yes, wonderful things that you have done for each and every one of us. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayer, Father God. I pray, O God, that you will complete, take complete control of this coronavirus, of Father God, and it will have no no control over your children, of Father God, and it will stop uh, this havoc, O Lord, that is happening, O Father God. Thank you for everything that you've done. I pray for protection over each and every single one of your children, of Father God, and your blessing to be showered upon them. In your mighty most not just name I ask this. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We worship Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. <coughs> Very good morning, church. Um, we're just going to take one more need in prayer, and that's we're going to pray for all the church services that's uh, all over the world if they are live streaming or if they're doing it in the churches, but just that. And gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, Lord, this wonderful time, Father, Lord God, Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for everything, Father. We just want to thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We just want to thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness that's been upon our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Father, Lord God, Lord, we pray and we lift up every church service this wonderful uh, morning, Lord God, Lord, we pray for your blessing to flow through in every service, Lord God, Lord, 
for those who are even doing the live streaming, for those who are able to open up churches in different parts of the world, Lord God. Lord, we just pray for your blessing over their lives, Father. Lord, we just pray for your hand of protection over the pastors, the preachers, the ministries, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, that you will bless their families, Lord God. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, for your hand of protection over every pastor at this time, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that every need of theirs will be met, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, that you will be in complete <coughs> control, Father. And we give you the glory, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Today's reading is taken from Luke 10, verses 12, 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened a home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The word of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Nice to be back on live streaming. Uh, for this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has blessed us. And I pray that God will minister to us even through the word that has already been uh, read by Sister Bernard in Newcastle about uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, the story concerning two sisters, uh, Mary and Martha. We are very familiar with this story, and sometimes, you know, it is good to revisit this kind of story you know, so that we will know where the church should be. Now, we find that uh, during this lockdown period, you know, many of us, you know, have been laid low and we have been relaxing and suddenly things are opening up and, you know, we are all in a hurry to go and accomplish great and mighty things. But, you know, the Lord has taught us during this lockdown period to relax and calm down because things will not be the same again. The, there is a new normal that, you know, anyone and everyone under the sun will have to get used to it. And uh, this is a story that is very appropriate for this time where we can find that you know, Jesus through the story of Mary and Martha is teaching uh, his church to look at things differently, to prioritize things differently. Right. And we have been doing things you know, in the past and we thought you know, we are all excited, we are all going to uh, achieve quite a lot of things and we are go-getters and so on. And just like Martha, you know, we wanted to achieve quite a lot, but you know, God, is, God has taught us uh, some very valuable lessons. Uh, not because of a uh, problem that we are facing, uh, but because of, you know, God wants us to look at things differently. He wants us to prioritize, you know, the situation that we are going through differently. Jesus and his disciples were on the way to Jerusalem. They are heading towards Jerusalem for the ultimate purpose of Jesus Christ coming to this planet Earth to fulfill his mission that he had come for, that is to lay down his life for the sins of the world, even as John the Baptist said in John chapter 1 verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, where angel proclaimed, angel Gabriel proclaimed that in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from sin. That's the purpose Jesus came for. Now Jesus is heading towards a direction where he will confront the religious system of the day and where he will turn everything upside down for people to realize that you know there are things that they need to do properly because God does not believe in the religious setup and the religious setup had become an obsolete thing for the people of Israel. And he was also going towards Jerusalem to die on the cross. He was also going towards Jerusalem where he will not only be buried, he will be raised up on the third day in the power of the glory of the Father. To redeem humankind, he comes to a village called Bethany. Uh, Bethany is a place where Mary and Martha and Lazarus live. And the word Bethany means a house, house of welcome. 
you know how appropriate it is for us to know uh, that Jesus Christ is going to a place to a village and to a home that is welcome that is open to him and the woman named Martha opened her home to him Jesus uh, was welcomed at Martha's place a home that was open to the Lord Jesus Christ perhaps this was the first visit why because John chapter 12 verse 11 records that Jesus has already become a close friend of Mary Martha and Lazarus because we find in the story of uh, Lazarus being raised from the dead in John chapter 11 uh, we find uh, that you know uh, the, they were sent about to Jesus Christ saying the one whom you love is sick come and uh, do something about him pray pray for him raise him up from the sickness and in, in verse 12 you know they were reclining at the table and lo and behold Martha is once again serving and she is very busy person you know many Christians are very busy too nowadays but you know God is saying okay I am going to take you away from your busyness and put you into my business because God's business is totally different so now the question I would like to ask is are our homes open for the person of Jesus Christ are our homes open so that you know the Lord's presence could come and dwell in us you know we go to God's house have you ever wondered you know God can accompany us back to our homes so that God can dwell many of us have wall hangings you know which says you know Jesus Christ is the unseen guest a silent listener to the conversation sometimes you know we make Jesus Christ to be an unseen guest he will never be seen at all and sometimes you know he is like you know a silent listener you know what Jesus is no, no longer a silent listener he is listening to everything that happens in home he is watching everything that happens in home and he is not an unseen guest he is very much present because of a very very beings because Jesus dwells in our beings and he is very much present in our homes now we have two sisters here on the outside if uh, on the outset if I were to ask a question to the members of LTAGC and whoever is listening to this word to this message if I were to ask whom do you like in the story you know outrightly we will say uh, without any hesitation we will say we want to be like Mary why Mary is commended by Jesus Christ so what do you mean Martha is condemned? No, she is not condemned. You know what? In the body of Christ, we need both Marys and Marthas. Now just because Mary chose the better part, it doesn't mean to say, you know, Martha is, you know, insignificant. She is not insignificant. Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he had to say. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. In Urdu, you know, there is a saying, uh, Kam Chor Nivale Hazar. That is Kamchur means you know the one who skulks work and Nivale has a mean but you'll be in time for food. That means you know someone labors, someone slogs in the kitchen and lo and behold you are there at the right time to eat. Now that's the story with Mary. I don't want to dwell more on that because uh, then you know the, the context of the very passage will differ. We Christians jump to conclusion. We judge. We portray more Mary as a good person and Martha as a bad person. And we would like to sign, I want to be like Mary, I want to, I don't want to be associated with Martha. But you know what? In the body of Christ, we need both. What is wrong with Martha? We are going to look at it. Is there anything drastically wrong with Martha? We are just going to look at it as we go down. We fall short of demonizing Martha. The body of Christ needs both, as I already mentioned. Both are friends of Jesus. Both are friends of Jesus along with Lazarus. You know, it's very important to know that in midst of all our challenges, limitations, combinations and permutations, you know, Jesus still loves us. Jesus still cares for us. Even though Martha was, uh, had failed in this particular case, you know, Jesus still loved. Jesus' love did not diminish for Martha and, you know, increase for many. You know, Jesus loves them the same. We are going to look at Martha. What is so important about Martha. Martha is a hard-working person, efficient, hospitable and very practical person. You know, hospitality is a gift and I have enjoyed hospitality in the body of Christ. I have been to some of our uh, believers homes. I mean, there is so much of hospitality displayed. Sometimes, you know, we wonder we will get hospitalized with their hospitality. Now, that is the kind of hospitality we have. You know, hospitality is a gift. Hospitality, it's one of the gifts that is recorded in the scripture. Hospitality. Every home and every person in the body of Christ should be hospitable. 
If you have to feed, you have to feed. If you have to counsel, you have to counsel. If you have to give something to people, you have to make sure that you know you are hospitable. Martha was one such hard working person. And we find Martha is found serving in the Gospels. In Luke chapter 10, in John chapter 12, you know, she's only busy found serving. You know, she's serving, she's waiting upon the Lord, she's waiting upon the disciples. She is willing to cook up a storm to make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ as well as his disciples are well fed, at least for that particular occasion. She could cook up a storm for a large group, maybe 15 to 20, 12, uh, 12 disciples plus Jesus Christ plus 3 from uh, Mary, Martha and Lazarus and plus maybe some other visitors also, maybe 20 people. It's not very easy to cater for a big gang. And you know, Jesus sometimes, you know, invited himself to... Uh, the home of Mary and Martha and do you think Mary and Martha were very rich for them to you know cater to such kind of a group and definitely they would have had good preparation also but you know what you don't have to be rich to be hospitable you know sometimes you feel you know we should have a lot of money to be hospitable to people in the body of Christ it is not necessarily so even you know a cup of water that is being given is honored by the Lord so hospitality sometimes we shouldn't go to the extreme like the way Martha was doing. She was too preoccupied with all the preparation. She was very, very busy. But she forgot the very person of Jesus Christ in the midst. She forgot that there was a very important guest that you know she needed to spend time with. She considered it as a privilege to care for the master and his disciples. It was a privilege for Martha to prepare a meal for Jesus and his disciples. For some, hospitality is all about arrangements. It is about lavish spreads and fine details. And it is about making everyone comfortable. It is about giving our best. I know we should give our best. I know our house should look spick and span. I know that you know when the body of Christ comes to our homes, you know, we should do it. Jesus was welcomed in the same manner by Mary and Martha. Definitely their home would have been very uh, clean and tidy and uh, spick and span. And just because Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ doesn't mean to say that, you know, the everything, the basics were left unattended to. But, you know, Mary, Martha definitely wanted to do quite a lot so that, you know, she could please the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, all the hospitality that Martha did, it was just because she loved the Lord. It's not for any other reason. It's not that, you know, she wanted to get attention that Jesus, you know, would have uh, praised her, you know, even to the point of going to the cross. No, no, that is not the reason. It is just, you know, so that she loved God so much. She said, Lord, I love you so much. I want to give you the best. So let us learn something from Martha's life also. Lord, we want to give you the best because we love you. We love you, O God. But hospitality is also about people. It's about relationship. It's about fellowship. People have come. We need to sit down. We need to talk. You know, perhaps, you know, Martha would have said, you know, Lord, if my only my sister can help, come and help. We can finish everything, we can have a meal, then we can sit down and talk and talk and talk. Of course, the Bible does not say so. Definitely, that would have been one of the intentions of Martha. I know she would have been paying, you know, everything I'm doing, no one is there to help. My sister, you know, she's wasting the time just sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. Because women in the, uh, the Lord's time, during Jesus' time on earth, you know, women were considered as... Good for nothing people, they didn't need any teaching. The rabbis, you know, refused to teach them because they thought it was a waste of time. But you know, Jesus brought in a new paradigm in the kingdom of God where he said, I am going to restore everything back which has been lost. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them equal. It was an egalitarian society. Jesus said, everyone is eligible to sit at the feet and learn from the master. Now that is the way Jesus brought in this kind of a revolution. Remember, it is a kingdom of God revolution. Kingdom of God has Mary, Martha, Lazarus and everyone sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ and learning from the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have a privilege, great privilege. Every person from LDAGC and everyone who hears uh, this word, you know, we have, it's a privilege for us to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and learn because this is the way kingdom of God functions. Everyone is alike. We don't know what meal Martha would have prepared. Definitely it would have been... Uh, a great spread but definitely we know that it would have been a kosher food and uh, they would have all enjoyed and but the problem with Martha was she was also distracted in all this busyness 
she was also distracted. That's what happens. When we go ahead of the Lord, you know, we should allow God to ordain our steps. Every step the righteous person takes is ordained of the Lord. You and I don't have to struggle. We don't have to go into a rat race to come up in life. God says, I will bless you. You want wealth, God says, I will bless you. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, it is the Lord who gives us the ability to produce wealth. It is God. And uh, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says, the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and it does not add any sorrow to it. It is the blessings of the Lord. You don't have to worry and struggle and compete in the world to try to come up. You know what God is saying? I will bless you. I want you to calm down. I want you to slow down your pace because I am in control of your life. And I will direct every step of your way so that you will go on in life to greater heights. She is frustrated that she is left alone to do all the preparation. Perhaps she wants to finish everything on time so that she also could catch a glimpse of what you know the Lord had to say. Was Martha's family well to do? Perhaps maybe because she is catering to such a big group. Yes. And she has been a very good hard-working, industrious person. We have a hard-working Martha and we have a hardly working Mary. She hardly works because she's always found at the feet of Jesus Christ. And we need to balance both. Busyness dominates our lives like Martha. We are always busy. It is the urgent work that controls our priority. Somehow, the urgent takes priority over our very regular and most important things. Say, for example, you have to pray. You have to fast, you have to read the word, you have to be in the church. But you know, suddenly this urgent thing comes and everything goes for a toss. And you know what? The urgent things take priority and all the things that please God and that glorifies God is pushed aside into the back burner. Life is so busy that we don't have time to access our priorities. You know, we all start well. Our race, we start well. But you know what? Starting well is only one aspect of the race. We should make sure that we complete the race and make sure that we win the race also because Apostle Paul demands that everyone runs as if to win the race. What is the outcome of our busyness, our preoccupation? Jesus had certain things to say to Martha. He said, Martha, you are worried about many things. You are upset about many things. You are frustrated. You are angry. You are emotional, you flare up. You know, that's what happens even in our life. When our life is, you know, working uh, clockwise precision, you know, it's very important that we need to be grounded to know what we actually are doing. Sometimes, you know, we go ahead and do certain things even if they are wrong. We don't have to. That is not what the way God has called us. God has called us to bless the work of our hands. Read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said, it said, God says, I will bless you. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, I will bless you. But do not forget the Lord when you have eaten and are satisfied. Because God is the one who blesses. What is wrong with Martha? Because of her busyness, there are so many things, you know, that are coming up, which are going to cause anxiety and very, uh, it's, it's going to cause some anxious moments in the life of Martha. She was worried about many things. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, it's not about just being busy uh, to become something great in the kingdom of God. No, no, no. We have to make sure that we have to spend quality time with the pres in the presence of God also. There was a time when, you know, Jesus and the disciples, they didn't even have time to eat. But what did Jesus say? Come aside. Let us step aside and let us spend some quality time together. You know, it's important that we take time away from all our busyness and say, Lord, I want to come back to you. I want to spend time in your presence. I want to get uh, directions from you for the coming week. I want to get directions for everything that happens in the future. Come back to God because God is the one who gives us the source. He's the one who has a blueprint for every one of us. Come, come back to God, receive from God and go back charged by the power of God to face an uncertain future that everyone goes through. Let us set, set our priorities right in midst of our busy schedule. For many, life is like fast food. Life is in the fast lane. Have a quick bite and move on to the next task on hand. Sometimes we don't even know what we are eating. We are trying to work, we are trying to attend the phone call, we are trying to eat. Now we don't know whether we are going to eat the mobile phone also. 
she is gently rebuked by the Lord. She gently, Martha, Martha. I'm sure he is not very rude. Martha, you know what happening? That's not the way Jesus is trying to say. Jesus is saying, Martha, Martha. You have been worried about too many things, but one thing is needed. You know, if we have that kind of a public rebuke, we will tell the Lord, Lord, you want me to stop cooking? You will end up eating lava. You know what is lava? Lava means love and fresh air. You are going to get only love and fresh air, Lord. If I stop cooking in the kitchen, you know what will happen? You will end up eating lava, love and fresh air. Lord, you are offending me. You know what you will get? Only bones. Sometimes, you know, we will do that. We will do that. <clears throat> that is Martha for us. But you know what? In midst of all of this, I see so much of passion in Martha. And she's doing all of this just because she loves the Lord. She wants the Lord to be blessed with a good meal. Nothing wrong in that. But only thing, you know, her priorities need to be realigned. Okay. No need to prepare 10 items. Maybe 5 items will do. You can save time and spend time with the Lord. Because... It's very important that we know what Jesus Christ is teaching. What was so important that Jesus was teaching? So that Mary had to be glued to his feet and at his feet and, you know, and not move away from the place. Perhaps Jesus Christ was preaching the word of God. Jesus Christ was preaching about the kingdom. Jesus Christ was preaching about his imminent death that was on hand. You know, sometimes you know, when we talk about death, we all get sorrowful. But you know, Jesus' death was far from being sorrowful. I know it was very painful. I know it was very agonizing. But you know what? That death was a death bringing in victory for sinful humanity. That is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ through which every person will receive that resurrection power and we can go on into victory. <clears throat> then we are going to look at another person, the second person, that is Mary. <clears throat> She sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. You know, listening to the Lord is very important. You can never listen to the, what the Lord is saying when you are busy or when you are in a tearing hurry. You will never listen. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. If you and I are called the sheep, we should also know the Lord. And then only we can follow the Lord. Then only we can hear the Lord clearly. Unless you and I listen carefully, we will not be able to do what the word of God says. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she is listening to the Lord. Do you think Mary is not compassionate that you know she is uh, just sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ and making her sister to work? She is very considerate. But you know what Jesus was saying to me, talking to Mary was very very valuable. And she never wanted to miss. Maybe perhaps you know, she would listen to Jesus and then go immediately and help her sister. What is that Jesus is teaching? We have already seen uh, very importantly that you know the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ you know, was being ministered to Mary. She spellbound. She could not take her attention away. Even though Martha is, uh, has come to Jesus Christ and she's saying everything possible, you know, to get Jesus' attention and to make sure that, you know, there is conviction upon Mary so that she'll get up from the feet of Jesus Christ and just go and help uh, Martha in the kitchen. She is definitely making it very clear, loud and clear, and that, you know, Mary will do it. But, you know, it does not happen. For Mary, it was a divine appointment. You know, divine appointments don't come easily. And a divine appointment comes when we make a deliberate choice to come and spend time in the presence of God. Saints, 31st of this month, 31st of May, is Pentecost Sunday. We are going to have a very important service where God's word will be ministered in a very powerful way. You know, Pentecost Sunday is the inauguration of the church. The power of the Holy Spirit was poured out and God's people were baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit and then they began to move out in the power of the Holy Spirit. The church was established. They were following apostles' doctrine. They were praying daily. And, you know, they, they gathered and they broke bread in every home. And wherever they went, you know, they spread the word. We are going to have a very great service. Uh, that is the coming Sunday morning. And I pray that every one of us will make sure that, you know, you are tuned into that service. We are going to hear something very precious from the Lord. We are going to worship God like never before. And we are going to see... What is the role of the Holy Spirit in the church? 
So I want to remind you well in advance, prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, so that we, you and I will be open to hear what God has to say on this Pentecost Sunday that is coming Sunday morning. So Mary, for Mary, it was a divine appointment. Let us make it a point every time we come to God's house. Of course, in this lockdown period, we have been prohibited from congregating together. But even very, the very listening to this message is live streaming. You know, it can be a divine appointment. So let us consider it as a divine appointment and come and spend time in the presence of God. This is it. Mary has chosen what is better. What a commendation. For us, you know, it may look like she is wasting her time. For us, you know, it, is, it looks like, you know, that, you know, she could do better, something better in the kitchen. But we find here that God is ministering uh, on behalf of Mary, saying, you know, that she has chosen the better part. And it is better. It is not just the better part, it is better. And it will not be taken away from her. That means, it is going to be an eternal privilege for Mary and people like Mary. That means when you put our priorities right, when you put the kingdom of God first, then you know what happens, that we are being blessed with a divine appointment and God will not disappoint us. Jesus said that it will not be taken away from her. Spending time with Jesus is better. Listening to what he says is better. It is our priorities. Many of us making the Mary was is making the most of the visit people will not remember the meal that was served but the word ministered makes a lasting impact and I pray that we will give top priority to the word of God that when we give top priority to the word of God that this this is what you know is going to get into our very being and transform us at life transforming assembly of God church we pray the word will transform us Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and the joint and the marrows, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, that's what is very essential. So we have seen two contrasting personalities of Martha and Mary. Both are very important, both are loved by Jesus Christ. Only thing is their priorities are different. In closing, I would like to say one important statement. Jesus said, Only one thing is needed. Only one thing is needed. Firstly, Jesus is saying, Martha, I want you to slow down. You are too hyperactive. You are too emotional. You are too excited. I want you to slow down. Now this is the best time, you know, the church has been slowed down. We were too busy doing so many things. Jesus is saying, I want you to slow down. Give top priority where priorities are due. Give top priority for the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Give top priority for the word. Give top priority for his very presence. And then your life will take a new turn. New turn for good. Secondly, the Lord is saying, take time to be in the presence of God. It is just between you and God. It is to listen to him. You know, when we come to God's house, it is not about people around us. I know we need to have fellowship with the people. I know we need to say hi bye to people. But much more than that, when you and I come to the house of God, let us come with the sole intention of being close to the Lord Jesus Christ, of having an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you and I sing, Lord, I love you, let us mean it, because it's very important that you know we mean it. Sometimes you know we are so used to the rhythm uh, and the beat of the songs, you know, even, even if you come midway through the service when the songs are going on, you immediately join. Why? We are so familiar with the song. We are so familiar with what is happening in the church. Let's take time to come on time and say, Lord, I am your presence. I want you to bless me. I have changed my priority, Lord. I have been busy, busy, busy. But Lord, now I want to set my priorities right. I want to come and just pres pres spend my time in your presence so that, Lord, I will hear from you and I will be blessed. Let us do that even as we continue to look to him. Thirdly, we need to do his will. Martha, you are so busy doing your will. I want you to spend time and do my will also. You know, doing the will of God is not easy. It, it, it involves a big price. It involves a lot of sacrifices. So, the Lord is saying to do his will. 
Jesus preferred Martha to spend time listening to him and his word. Jesus is calling the church back to that one thing that is needed. Church, there is one thing that is needed. Come back to that one thing. That is the presence of God. That is the word of God. That is the fellowship. Come back. Spend time, quality time in the presence of God. Maybe in prayer, in fasting. Come back to God. Church, this is the best time, you know, you can realign your priorities. Because life is going to get busy again. But in the midst of that, if you set your house in order, set your priorities in, uh, in order, then you know we will be blessed people. Be part of that which has eternal value. It will not be taken away. You know, if you and I uh, value eternal uh, values, you know, it is going to be a great help for us. Let us uh, focus our attention on those things that have eternal value. The scripture says, labor not for the meat that perish. Not. Let us not sow all our energy into uh, um, earning, earning and earning. Earning is not bad. We have to. We have to earn. We have to take care of the family. But let not earning be the only priority in life. Let us also give time to the Lord so that you know God can bless us. When you have exhausted yourself, just come into the presence of God. Jesus said, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart for my burden is... Uh, light and my yoke is easy. You know, that is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30. God is calling back the church to him. God, God is calling back uh, the church to spend more time in his presence. Quality time in his presence. Don't get distracted like Martha, but rather uh, be in the presence of God so that God could bless us. Where is the church today? Is the church in Mary's place? Or is the church in Martha's place? There is a time for everything. There is also a time to come back to the Lord. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But for seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. Let us spend time and come back to the love of God. The first law, remember the first law, the efficient church was corrected because they had left the first law. Let's pray and ask for God's blessing. And I pray that this word will be a blessing to every one of us, that this Sunday it will be uh, blessing to us, we will apply it and for the rest of our life we will have our priorities changed so that God's name will be glorified. I am going to pray for all the families of the church at this time. So let us spend time and pray for the families. <clears throat> Father, this time we call, we pray Lord for our families. Pray God for my family Lord. Lord for Jackie, Joel, Joanna, myself and my mother-in-law Lord. Pray for Brother Nelson of God, Sister Judy. Pray for Fabian, Belinda, Nathaniel, Nackley Lord. We also pray for Brother Richard, Sister Lulu, O God. We pray, God, for your blessings to rest upon Terina and Nirmal, O God, in Dubai. We also pray for Sister Maureen, O God. Pray for Brother John. Lord, we pray for Tasha. Lord, we pray for Michaela and Chloe, O God. Pray for Hazara Pranam, Mahi, Abu Jai, Sona, Lord. Pray, God, for Brother David, Lord. Pray for Sister Mary, Lord. Jennifer, Christina, Marilyn, Lord. Pray for Brother Royston. Sister Landa, Kim, Tanya, Brandon, and Raymond also, God. Pray for Sister... Uh, Grace of oh God and her siblings of oh God, pray for Sister Heather, Dolly of oh God, Esther Yvonne in Australia, pray for Michael Shires, Anita Shires of oh God, pray for uh, Lord uh, Steffi Lord, pray for Andrea oh Lord, pray God for your blessings to rest upon Jordan and Andrew H. We release salvation upon them, we release that they will be brought back into your fold again, O oh God. We also pray God for your blessings to rest upon Sister Ingrid and her siblings of oh God, pray for Dean, Alex of oh God, and uh, Hyson and their families, and Denver also, Lord, pray God for Pastor Patrick, Lord. We pray also for Sister Mary, Lord, Alan Alvin, oh God. We also pray, God, for Sister Philomena, Lord, Sister Teresa, Lord. We also pray, God, for Marcus family, Lawrence's family. Lord, Father, we uh, Father, we also pray, God, for Sister Sherry, Lord. We pray for uh, Brother Craig, Lord, for Carrie, uh, for uh, Calvin, Lord. Pray for Brother Gavin, Sister uh, Carrie, and Lord, Riley, Rankin, Ryan. Lord, pray for Sister Sandra, Lord. Pray, God, for your blessings to us upon Daryl and Andrew, oh God. We also pray for Brother Benji, O oh God, minister to uh, his family's need, O oh God, especially uh, Sister Maria, Lord, pray for Rachel, uh, for, pray for Rebecca, Lord, pray God for Prashant Ricardo, Lord. We also pray, O oh God, for your blessings to respond to the Eugene, Lord, Sister Sandra, Lord, Steffi, Crystal, and Meryl, O oh God, pray for Brother Dexter, Andrea, Lord, pray God for Abigail and Dylan, pray for Sister Aisha, Wajid, Lord, Mr. Wajid, Lord, we also pray for Mahavish Altamash, pray God for Rubina, Lord, uh, pray for her parents, Lord, pray for 
brother Muntaz, brother Chamanali Lord, sister Muntaz of Lord, we pray for brother Muzaffar, her brother Lord. We also pray God for sister Vijayta, bless her Lord in a special way. We pray for our sister Rayman, her brother Lord. We also pray God for your uh, blessings to uh, rest upon Lord. All Prakash and KJ Christi Lord, minister to the needs also. Pray for Shandam Lord, pray God for his parents Lord, uh, Father Cyril Lord, uh, Mother Avril Lord, for sister Shantam God. Pray for Brother Ricky Lord, pray Lord for your blessings to rest upon uh, Rajan Alexander, Melanie Alexander, Rachel and Ryan Alexander also God. We also pray this time for uh, Brother Wallace Newcastle of God, pray for Sujata Newcastle, Mark Newcastle of God. We continue to pray God for your blessings to uh, rest upon uh, Michael Ryan of God. We also pray God for your blessings to rest upon uh, Sister uh, Maggie, Sister uh, Josephine of God. Continue to bless them and minister to their needs also God in a special way. Lord, we also pray for Brother George, Darty, Moses, Monica, Martin of God. We also pray God for your blessings to rest upon um, Christian Lord, pray for uh, Yvonne uh, and uh, Melvin James of God, pray for Finella's family of Lord. We also pray for Daisy's family Lord, pray for Tyrone's family Lord. Continue to bless all of the church families of God. We also pray for visiting friends of God that we visit, visit us from time to time. Lord, we pray God for your blessings to rest upon Sister Sharita, uh, parents of God, Mr. Ibrahim Lord, Sister Aisha Lord. We also pray God for blessings to rest upon. Uh, Shakila Bound Lord, Hamid and Tasneem Fatima. We also pray God for Abu Dhabi's family. Pray Lord for your blessings to rest upon Lord Aisha Sheikh Lord. We pray for uh, her son's family in uh, Canada, Pharaoh's family in Canada Lord. We also pray God for your blessings to rest upon Nafisa's family. She is working at Wellness forever. We pray for Shweta's family also Lord. We also pray for Salma's family Lord. Salma Lord, Fahim, Salma Fahim Nisa Lord. We pray for her siblings. Lord pray for Seema Shabrin. Uh, Najma and Afshan, Lord, continue to bless them, minister to the name, pray for my sister Lakshmi, Lord, minister to her family, pray for Brother Kingsley, Amuda, Arshan and Olive, continue to minister to their needs, O Lord, healing, Lord, and also divine protection upon Arshan and Olive, Lord. We also pray, O God, for your blessings to rest upon uh, uh, Agnello, Xavier, Nicola, Lord, pray for Trisha, Hannah, and Shikaina, Lord. We pronounce your blessings all, heaven's blessings, O God, upon our members of the Church of God. We pray, O God, even for those that are hearing this word, that we pronounce your blessings upon them, Lord. We pray for your glory of anointing to rest upon everyone. Pray for divine protection. Pray for divine provision, O God. We pray that your angels will guard and protect everyone. Keep everyone in good health. We release salvation on whom salvation is due, O God. And I pray, O God, that your people will be blessed beyond measure, O God. I pray, Lord, that you continue to minister to them. Draw them closer to you, O God. That even as we heard from Mary and Martha's story, Lord, I pray that we'll put our priorities right. And do things of God that you will be able to say that one thing is needed and that's what LTAGC and everyone that is hearing the word will be commended for God. Continue to minister to everyone and keep everyone in the center of your will. I pray Lord that your heads will be around us, your wall of fire will be around us. Lord, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Lord, the plagues and pestilences will be far away Lord from the dwellings of your children of God. To that end I commit everyone into thy most precious hand. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Very good morning and uh, praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed the, this uh, wonderful service that God gives us in His ways. In these days, we didn't expect that uh, we would be doing services like this, but I think we are coming to an end and that uh, and soon the church will get together. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that uh, we could be together and have the the real music and the real, uh, you know, the crowd and everything. So let's uh, pray and thank God and close this service. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for the special time that you have given. In your ways, Lord, we will worship you and praise you, Lord. We thank you for the precious words that have come from Pastor, uh, regarding Mary and Martha. Father, bless our hearts and we continue that it will bless uh, people as they watch this uh, wonderful uh, service, Father. We thank you for the praise, the worship, Father, the reading, and Father, for the praying for each and every family, Father. We thank you once again, Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. And uh, we meet again, Father, in, in whatever manner, Lord. We praise you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Before I pronounce the benediction, it's indeed my great joy to thank the team that constantly works from time to time to make this live streaming a great blessing. Once again, I would like to thank Brother John uh, for his uh, labor of love and Brother Gavin. Uh, they both have done a tremendous job in uh, whatever has been done so far. Uh, they are the uh, high-tech people. And they are the ones, you know, that will uh, make these things happen. Uh, you know, God has given talents to the church and uh, it has to be used for the glory of God. And that's what Brother John and Brother Gavin have been doing. And we'd also like to thank and praise God for others that were part of the service. Uh, for Sister Tasha, uh, Ricky, Joel and uh, Joanna also. And we also thank and praise God for Brother Richard, Sister Lulu, uh, for their contributions in the service in scripture reading and closing prayer and uh, we also like to thank Brother Gavin and Sister Carrie and traveling uh, quite a distance to be here uh, almost more than 20 kilometers uh, we are grateful to God for all their contributions and effort we value their uh, contributions very highly and we'd also like to thank and praise God for Brother John and Sister Tasha for opening their home to have this uh, live streaming done and we pray that God will bless them all in a very special way. So, uh, thank every one of you for being part of this very important service. Thank you, Brother Ricky, for uh, being part of this service. And we pray God will minister to every one of us. God is a greater to no person. He will honor us. He will bless us beyond measure. So, before we pronounce the benediction, once again, I would like to remind, 31st May is the Pentecost Sunday. I want you to prepare your heart because it is going to be a very special service and we want you to prepare your hearts, gear up because it is all about the arrival of the Holy Spirit upon the church. It is all about the inaugural of the church. Without the Holy Spirit, the church is dead. But thank and praise God, Jesus Christ promised and he sent the Holy Spirit so that you and I could be blessed by the very presence and power of the Holy Spirit. So we are going to pronounce the benedictions now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon everyone now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.